In this lesson, we will look at aspects of turbulent wall bounded flows. Wall bounded flows are situations where fluid flows through or around a solid body. A few examples are flows through pipes or tubes, flow over a car, or in fact, even flow over you when you are cycling or swimming. Because of viscosity, a very thin layer close to the body called the boundary layer is formed within which viscous forces play a crucial role. All boundary layers start off in an orderly manner that is laminar and eventually transition to attain a turbulent nature. Based on our understanding of the laminar boundary layers, we will now develop a framework to understand the behavior of turbulent boundary layers. For this purpose, we will use the flow over a flat plate. Let us now consider the two-dimensional version of Rand's equations written in the Cartesian coordinates. Because the boundary layer is a very thin region, its thickness is very small compared to the length of the plate. Furthermore, we can assume that the variation of properties in the streamwise direction is negligible compared to the variation in the wall normal direction. Also, since we are assuming that the flow is two-dimensional, all the Z components and their derivatives can be neglected. As a result, the Rand's equations reduce to those shown here. For external flows like this case, since most of the viscous effects are restricted to the boundary layer, we can assume an inviscid region outside the boundary layer. Consequently, the Bernoulli's equation is satisfied here and at the edge of the boundary layer, we have the following relation. Substituting this into the momentum equation, we obtain the equation shown here. These equations can be solved by applying the no-slip boundary condition on the flat plate and the mean flow matching condition at the edge of the boundary layer. Recollect the axial momentum equation from the laminar boundary layer. The only difference between these two equations is the presence of the Reynolds stress term in the turbulent boundary layer equations. From the integral forms of conservation of mass and momentum equations, we know the displacement thickness and the momentum thickness of the boundary layer. The Karman momentum integral equation, which is obtained by manipulating the continuity and the momentum equations, is shown here. This equation, written in terms of the displacement and momentum thickness, is also valid for turbulent boundary layers. However, there is one difference. The stress term has contributions from the turbulent velocity fluctuations in addition to the laminar stresses. Now that we know the governing equations of the turbulent boundary layer, we can use the numerical techniques to solve and obtain a solution for a given problem. We will not discuss those methods in this course. However, we will slightly switch gears and directly discuss the behavior of the turbulent boundary layers. Prandtl's mixing length hypothesis provides an algebraic estimate for calculating the eddy viscosity. Based on this theory, it is possible to classify the turbulent boundary layer into three different zones. The inner layer or the near wall region where the viscous forces play a dominant role. This region covers about 50% of the total boundary layer thickness. This region can also be further divided into two zones laminar sublayer, 
This is the zone that is closest to the wall. It is so named because of the highly viscous nature of the flow in this region which forces the flow to be laminar. Buffer zone. This region is a transition region where the viscous forces from the laminar sublayer still play a role but the turbulent nature of the flow starts to kick in. Outer layer. The region beyond the near wall is called the outer layer where the turbulence effects dominate and the influence of viscosity is negligible. Overlap layer. This is the transition region between the inner and the outer layers through which the effect of the wall slowly starts to fade away. In order to describe the flow in these different layers, Prandtl and Karman reasoned that in the inner layer, the free stream properties do not really impact the flow characteristics. Instead, the mean velocity in the boundary layer depends on properties such as wall shear stress, density, viscosity, and the wall normal distance. Based on dimensional analysis, we can obtain two dimensionless variables that have the following form. Here, V star has the units of velocity and is called the wall friction velocity. On the other hand, in the outer layer, the velocity distribution is dictated by the free stream pressure gradient, wall shear stress, and the boundary layer thickness but not the viscous forces. Once again, based on dimensional analysis, we obtain the following relations. This relation is sometimes also referred to as the velocity defect law, where the circle term is the reduction in the velocity due to the influence of the wall. In the overlap region, the F inner and the F outer functions seen in the relations here are got by imposing a velocity match. By doing so, we can show that these two functions are in fact logarithmic. Based on this, we can rewrite the velocity profiles for the two layers for the overlap region as shown here. These two relations are equivalent to each other. This logarithmic velocity profile distribution is generally referred to as the law of the wall. Because of the logarithmic variation, the overlap region is also referred to as the log law region. In these equations, k and b are universal constants and are approximately 0.41 and 5 respectively. The value of the constant A is primarily defined by the mean flow pressure gradient among other variables. If we plot the relation for the inner layer with the experimental data, we notice that in the range of Y+, plus, which is the non-dimensional wall normal distance, extending from 30 to 350, there is an excellent correlation between the log profile and the experiments. The upper range of Y plus increases with increasing Reynolds number. For example, for atmospheric boundary layer flows, the log law region can extend to the order of thousands of Y plus. In the region very close to the wall, that is the viscous sublayer, where the Y plus is below 5, the velocity profile is linear. Between the Y plus values of 5 and 30, that is the buffer region, the velocity profile neither follows the linear nature of the viscous sublayer nor the logarithmic nature of the overlap region. It in fact adopts a smooth profile that transitions from the linear to the logarithmic character. Spalding, in 1961, 
proposed a composite blend of the law of the wall which is valid for the entire wall region including the buffer layer beyond a y plus of 350 the logarithmic profile is no longer valid this is because the outer layer at this location is significantly influenced by the free stream pressure gradient Coles observed from multiple experiments that the deviation of the velocity from the log distribution takes the shape of a wake he proposed a modification to the log law to include a wake function this wake function is determined by a curve fit a common form of which is shown here this modified log law profile is valid all through the overlap and the outer layer region that is beyond a y plus of 30 For regions below a y plus of 30 the wake function can be neglected and the spalding formula can be used to calculate the velocity distribution by integrating colss wall wake formulation we can obtain the boundary layer parameters such as the displacement momentum thicknesses and the skin friction coefficient these equations need to be solved in order to estimate the boundary layer properties however based on certain experimental data correlations can be written that can circumvent the equation solving if we assume the mean flow equilibrium that is zero pressure gradient the velocity profile can be described by a value of pi is equal to 0.45 at the edge of the boundary layer we can obtain the following relation for the skin friction coefficient by curve fitting we obtain a power law approximation for the skin friction coefficient based on pipe flows prandtl suggested the use of a 1/7th power law correlation for the velocity to determine the momentum thickness but We know that the skin friction coefficient is related to the momentum thickness by the relation shown here. Upon substituting and solving, we obtain the relations for the boundary layer thickness and skin friction coefficient in terms of Reynolds number based on the axial length of the flat plate. By now, you probably have a good idea regarding the behavior of the turbulent boundary layers a question you might be having is how do they compare with the laminar boundary layers let us recall the relations for a laminar boundary layer over a flat plate we will now consider an example problem to get a sense of how different the two boundary layer profiles are let us assume that air at 20 degree centigrade is flowing over a smooth flat plate of length 1 meter at a velocity of 10 meters per second the reynolds number of this flow is approximately 650000 the critical reynolds number for a smooth flat plate is 100000 and the transitional reynolds number is about 3 million based on this range the current problem is in the transitional regime So it is fair to compare the solutions from both the boundary layer theories. At the trailing edge of the plate, the boundary layer thickness assuming a laminar profile is approximately 6 mm. On the other hand, the turbulent profile is about 24 mm, which is 4 times that of the laminar profile. the skin friction coefficient values also show a similar trend a representative profile for the axial velocity distribution as it varies with the wall normal distance for both the boundary layer types is shown in this graph it is easy to see that the turbulent profile is more fuller compared to the laminar profiles 
This is because of the enhanced momentum exchange for the turbulent boundary layers that brings in high velocity fluid from the outer regions towards the wall. With that, let us wrap up this lesson.